in the workshop. This is part three of a diabolical model steam engine. The further I strip down this engine, the worse it gets, and the engineering standard plummets to an all-time low. This mess is the piston rod, and I can see clearly what's happened. The original detents that were drilled in the piston rod to hold a couple of securing bolts were done like this when the engine was made. But over the years, some not very talented people have worked on this engine, and obviously there's been a problem with it not turning over. I'll show in the next episode exactly what that problem is. What's happened is someone's drilled and threaded a hole through the piston rod so that the crosshead moves the piston further forward in the cylinder. Whoever did this must have automatically presumed that the piston was hitting the cylinder on the inside and therefore this inverted commas modification was to change the position of the piston relative to the position of the crosshead. And speaking of crossheads, here is the crosshead. The hole in it is not exactly the right size, so I'm thinking maybe I should machine a piston rod with a slightly larger end bit that fits in the crosshead. No, I'm having a closer look and a think about this, and I know why the hole is bigger in the crosshead. More about it in a future episode. This engine belongs to a friend of mine, a young man called James Evans. James is only 16 years old as of the 31st of July 2023 and his experience of machining is non-existent. Originally I was going to try and reuse this piston rod but regrettably it's no good. I looked at making a new piston rod out of this piece of steel. But it's not really suitable, I'm going to use a piece of stainless steel but that is in another episode. I would not normally take on a job like this. I'm doing it for a bit of entertainment, really for me, and it will make a video for the channel. For instance, look at this. There's a very strange looking screw fitted into the big end brass. And why is that? Well, because it's a wood screw. I mean, who can do a job like this? It just it beggars belief, really. I'm not taking this job very seriously. I'm going to repair the engine and make it go. And I'm hoping I will end up with quite a sympathetic restoration. These two steel machine screws holding the bearing cap in place are just temporary. I'm hoping to use 4BA and 5BA brass machine screws with a single slot domed head. At the crosshead end, the connecting rod split brasses are held together with one brass and one steel dome-head machine screw. As you can see from this clip, the brass one came out very easily, but the steel one was very tight in the hole. Is it going to shear off and make a lot more work? I'm really not sure. I'm not going to do it this way because I don't want to stick the screwdriver in my finger. This is a very easy thing to do. I tried the crosshead in a different position on the bench, but it was still very tight. There's nothing for it, it's going to have to go in the vice. But not directly in the vice jaws, I use these pieces of brass angle. With the crosshead firmly mounted in the vice, it was actually quite easy to remove the bolt. Like everything else on this engine, the crosshead is, well, a bit bizarre. Is this a crosshead from a parallel universe, I ask myself? Well, I really don't know. For now, I'm just happy to be able to remove the connecting rod from the crosshead. The crosshead will need repairing, but the piston and rod will need to go in the bin. At this point, here is a warning. It's not a health and safety warning. The following image and most of this series may be disturbing for some viewers. It is for me anyway. This thing, believe it or not, is the crosshead guide support, which also holds the valve operating mechanism. It looks to me like it's been soldered and resoldered. And guess what? I'm going to solder it again. I'm only doing this job for my friend James just for a bit of fun. It would be quicker to machine the parts for a brand new engine. But that's not the point. This is really going to be an extremely sympathetic restoration. Here I'm drilling out the holes that are threaded in the base plate because the holes were a bit big and the threads weren't very strong. I drilled both of the holes clearance size for 4BA bolts. Now I'm countersinking the underside. 
Normally for this job I would use a depth stop, but I decided to just wing it and do it by eye as usual. I can't muster up too much enthusiasm to be extremely accurate with this thing. Something interesting to look at, this has had a piece inset. And it's a scarf joint, it's not just a straight butt joint. The question is why? I'll just clean it up so you can see the joint a bit better. This base plate has been something else in a previous life. So let me think about it. Was there a metal shortage? Well, there was after World War II. And I've seen quite a few examples over the years of parts being repurposed because of this. For instance, water tanks for miniature steam locomotives using an inner box made from a piece of old water cylinder with the holes for the original fittings patched and soldered. And in fact, it's been soldered excessively for some reason. I thought it would be a good idea at this stage to trim off the wood screw that sticks through. Now it's gone and the bed plate is flat. And I've just noticed that this screw that I took out of the connecting rod fits perfectly to hold the engine down onto the baseboard. This is not the cylinder end because the hole in the cylinder end is not even in the right place and it's not countersunk. And also, to add insult to injury, it's not even in the middle. The bed plate is two inches wide, so the hole should really be on the one line. When I turn the bed plate back over, as you can see, one of the bolts for the cylinder is sticking out a bit too far. I took it out, trimmed a bit off and screwed it back in. But look at the holes, they're just sort of drilled in an old place. When I first looked at this engine, before I took it apart, I noticed a lot of things wrong with it. One of the things being that the cylinder is not in the middle of the bed plate. That's enough of this for one episode. I'm going to take my medication and lay in a dark room for 12 hours. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.